Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Tito Bonito Show. Tonight, we have very special burlesque stars, Redbone from Minneapolis and San Francisco, and the iconic Miss May. And now, get ready for your host, the Cuban Missile Crisis of Burlesque, Tito Bonito! Yay! Yay! Oh my god! Yay! Thank you! Looking tan, looking fresh, looking nice! How y'all doing today? How are my two viewers currently? But there's gonna be a lot more soon. Uh, and to all the virtual viewers that are going to be watching later on and not live, where are you right now? Every Friday night, come here for the Tito Bonito Show right here on Instagram Live. I'm trying to get a talk show. If you know what I'm saying, I'm trying to get a late night talk show. There needs to be at least one other host that's going to not be named Jimmy. You hear what I'm saying to you? But I digress. I am the Tito Bonito, the Cuban Missile Crisis, the Bay of Pigs, the Ricky Ricardo of Burlesque. And I'm here to entertain the hell out of y'all and to talk to some incredible artists. So tonight we have two very special guests that are Phenomenal burlesque performers, not only taking over the scene, but also doing it in their own way. So I'm very excited to get to know them even more than I already do. They are pers personal friends of mine for years. And hopefully if you don't know about them, you'll know a little bit more about them by the end of the night. Uh, before we get started, though, I do want to shout out. I literally just got back from uh, the Savage Ranch in Temecula, California, and it is run by Love is Bailey. Also, uh, a big hand on the ranch is one of our personal friends to the Tito Bonito show, Isaac Aaron. Uh, and I went with a socially distancing uh, moment with Donna Hood of Tease, if you please, and Kat, one of our videographers, an amazing performer who also dances in Tease, if you please. So we got a couple of photos. Uh, I definitely took some nude ones, so those will be on my OnlyFans. You're going to have to go there and check that out. But here's just a little taste of what, uh, got, what I got into in the two days that I was at the Savage Ranch. And let me tell you, it is an incredible artist compound. They have 100 acres, horses, chickens, all everything you need in your life, plus an aesthetic that is to die for. So if you don't know about the Savage Ranch, I highly suggest that you follow at Savage Ranch or the hostess with the mostess uh, at Love is Bailey. And uh, it's gonna be, it is, has been an incredible ranch and artist com uh, compound, but it's growing more and more every day. So let's get started with this shit. We have an incredible first guest hitting us uh, on real quick. Also remember there's my Venmo on the bottom. If you so choose to send me a dollar, that'd be cute as fuck. I'd get three right now, but what? <laughs> Who is this? This is a uh, problem. <laughs> I Who? am looking for a red bone. I'm looking for a, this person. Who? I'm looking for a red bone. Who? I'm looking for a red bone. Are you, you looking, looking for the princess of burlesque 2019? The reigning one. Yes. I, I love you. Wait. Are you looking for the cyclone? Yes, I am looking for the cyclone. You are. I am. I love the I don't know her. <laughs> you don't know her? She's not here. She's not here? No, don't tell no, me that. <laughs> Foxy here. Tan, how are you, my love, my light? I am high on dabs and getting <laughs> drunk. So I am going to retire to watch your video live and give you the person. See, I can barely do this. Give you the person that you really want to speak to. And she like. She put on makeup and like lashes and everything for you. Oh my God. For you. For little old me. You should feel really privileged and happy about that. And like her hair looks lots Foxy. better. Because mine got Foxy, out. I'm it, done. Like, I'm drink done. Drink a clock or something like oh, that. Fuck. Drink, isn't it drink a clock? What's happening? It's fucking drink a clock, bitches. Drink a clock. Drink a clock. I got water though. Bye. I know. I'm with. I'm with my water as well. Thank you, Foxy. Thank you, Not Foxy, for that. It's so good to fabulous, me. fabulous treat wasn't of a day. Listen, not Hello. not an introduction. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Nothing less than the best for the number three performer in the motherfucking world to give it up for Red Bone. Y'all show some love. Hit those hearts. Let her know that you like what you see. Because let me tell you, you have to be blind to not enjoy what you're seeing right now. Okay. How you, you. How you doing, my love? Oh, uh, I'm really good. I'm, I'm, you know, as good as I can be right now. Um, as Foxy said, I have put on makeup for the first time in over a month. Um, which honestly, the break has been lovely in that regard. Um, but yes, uh, I'm you, doing well. You look stunning. You look gorgeous. Thank you. I'm still in my pajamas and you can't smell me. Oh, listen, uh, I'm completely naked from the waist down if you want to okay. take if you want to take a gander at the goods, look at this. Look at this moment. Yes. Yes, booty. Mwah. I literally just got from the Savage Ranch an hour ago. Oh, you got to roll in. Like Taking my little Tito Bandito cowboy photos. I'm going to send you one of the nude ones that I took. Oh, definitely DM me, boo. DM that's going to be for, that's going to be a, a nudie newbie, if you will, because I, yes, <laughs> I don't take those front pictures. I don't take those front pictures. I don't show the dick. I don't show the Ooh. Mystery. I mean, you got to pay good money to see the D. Okay. Listen, no, not even. You got to pay too much money. But for my friends, I give it to them for free. Oh, thanks. I feel, Rev I feel real special right now. You are very special. Not only are you looking gorgeous right now, but before your introduction was by the iconic Foxy Tan in Foxy the building. Foxy Tan, her <laughs> highness of highness. The highness of highness. That's how you got your start, right? You start. You are a burlesque performer, producer, uh, going to be, not anytime soon because you're still young as shit, but you are going to be a legend. Ooh, I thank you. I mean, so I pre-face that because I want your future self to be able to watch your young self and be like, damn, I was killing the motherfucking game. <laughs> look how young I look. Look how young I was. I appreciate it. I appreciate it, boo. <laughs> but tell the world how you got started in burlesque. You've been doing it for a minute now. Yeah, actually. So um, 15 years. I was. Act I might actually be 16, depending on what I really want to, you know, consider. Really claim but to your start? 2004 was like my first audition for uh, the very first neo burlesque troupe here in Minneapolis, uh, Le Cirque Rouge des Gus. Shut and up. Yeah, so that was 2004. You know, I was like go-go dancing at First Avenue and all that stuff. So I was like, sure, I'll do burlesque. Okay. Um, so yeah, so 15, 16 years. Um, I've had a couple starts. Um, my kind of major catapult um, was, yes, with Foxy Tan as uh, one third of Foxy Tan and the Wham Bam. Thank you, ma'ams. Um, and still to this day, Wham Bam Nation forever. Okay. Yes. Yeah. You know you know, you know. So, um, yeah, and that was started here in, in Minneapolis. And since, and it's the funny, I think the funniest part is that, like, I didn't want to solo. Like, I, I had no interest in soloing. And then Foxy one day was just like, if we're going to make this work, you're going to have to solo. And I was like, mm, okay. <laughs> uh, that's fair. You know, funny enough, that's actually how I started burlesque. I wanted to be a part of a group because I didn't have the confidence to like do it on my own. Yeah. And then I got so sick and tired of waiting for everybody to do the fucking audition. I was just like, I'm just gonna go. Just do it. Damn. I'm just gonna do it by <laughs> my damn self. Uh, so what was it like performing for the first time burlesque? Did you feel comfortable? Did it feel like something that you kind of wanted to do all your life? Or was it kind of something that grew into the phenomenon that it is now? Um, I didn't know that burlesque was gonna be the thing to realize my life dream right, which was traveling and dancing, you know, dancing, making money, you know, making that, you know, living through my art. Um, prior to that, I was, uh, you know, on, on, on that track in a, in a way, right? I'm like, go, go dancing. I'm doing all the different dance stuff I can do within the city, um, you know, part of companies, part of uh, different groups, learning different dance forms. Um, and so burlesque at the time was just, I was looking at it like, oh, another source of income in alignment with dance to be able to like be a full-time entertainer. And um, no, I, yeah, I, I so to, to, to your question though, was I comfortable? Pretty much, I was already go-go dancing half naked on a stage for tips anyways. Like that it's was- a good transition, yeah. The transition was fairly easy. Um, and of course, you know, back, you know, 15 years ago, our pasties were like this big, like, <laughs> you know, so it was like, oh, it's just a bra without a strap, you know, or whatever. Um, 
which was so that yeah that was pretty funny um you Big know but then as you as you go on they get smaller and smaller and smaller which is I'm about which that. We love that. I love that. I right. like some big ones because my nipples be like this. So if I get big ones, I can kind of transfer them closer together to make it look like yeah. I'm not kind of going cross-eyed on everybody. We call those walleyes. Oh. So this one, <laughs> so here's the other thing, right? Is so right. <laughs> Foxy Tan and the Wham Bams, uh, like it had iterations prior to, but Foxy Tan is Foxy Tan and the Wham Bam. Thank you, ma'ams. Uh, we started in a strip club. We were at the Seville here in Minneapolis. Okay. And, um, and I was also had experience with uh, in strip clubs and, and things of that nature, just going like oddly from a young age, which is another story. But um, uh, so like in that environment, nudity, things of that nature was always fairly comfortable um, to me. And so this, I didn't really, you know, it didn't impact me. It, it didn't like stress me out to like take my clothes off. I was like, fuck yeah. Like, <laughs> Yeah, 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 you not only are from Minneapolis, but you all you have also taken your career to San Francisco. Yes. So what? Um, where? So, but you're right now in obviously Minneapolis. I'm currently in Minneapolis. I know. I was like, ooh, I was like the bad kid that got on a plane. Um, Is that bad? Listen, I actually went to visit my family, so it's like as long as you're being smart about being on a plane and the fact that there are less people. Hey, like, just don't be dumb about shit, which I doubt you were. Plus, I'm sure you want to go back and just be around some people for a while because that is really something that's important for us to kind of be able to do if we can't, like right. figure out some sort of way if we are lucky enough to be able to do that right now. Yeah, totally. And it was that, I was like definitely needed to get back. I, I just felt really this urge to get back to my people, check in, spend some time. Um, so yeah, and it's been it's been pretty great. I'm, you know, a lot of the different energies as like, you know, the world is so nuts right now so there's been a lot of good a lot of uh, also pain and you know the waves lots of fireworks um, oh my god that was a firework <laughs> jeez still it is august bitch people do not care like we're next but to it, wisconsin like we're next to wisconsin people are like bruh, 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 bruh. you know they're, bruh, they're bruh, all but you it. know, I always think too that as artists, we give so much to the audience, we give so much to producers, we give so much to ourselves that so a lot of times we don't take those mental health checks to just kind of be like, where do I need to be? What do I need to be doing? And right. I feel like we have a little bit of a blessing right now to have this like break for so long that it's like, even though we don't have a break because we can create stuff, it's still we need to like even more so check in and make sure we're doing all right. I felt like it was a catapult to listen to myself, right? Like, like Rona, the blessing in disguise. Like, you know, yeah. I'm, you know, it's very extremely it's like sad how, how many people we've lost. But it's as soon as Rona hit, I started mourning burlesque as I knew it. I started knowing red or mourning Redbone as, as I knew it. You know, yeah. like I'm not that I'm retiring the cyclone, but the cyclone, I didn't know how I was going to keep up with myself. You know, and yeah. and and in some other ways, uh, which. You know, I don't need to get going all the way, but, um, you know, just, but getting to a place of the reflection and thinking about myself within everything. How do I want to continue to move into our future? Yeah, because it is very different. And I know there's a lot of artists that don't want to perform on digital shows. And actually, like, I'm starting to get into that mind frame of being like, trying to create my own kind of thing to the side while still trying to like, perform, but just wait I guess is the biggest thing it's just kind of waiting to see because everybody wants to know, act like they know what's going on and it's one of those things where it's like I know that I don't know anything about anything so right try to make sure I check in with myself as an artist make sure, as a person and just make sure I don't uh fall into the states of like depression or whatever anxiety that like can easily happen right now like yeah but no, um, totally and and you know I think you know that's also part of our journey as artists right and then utilizing that in whatever way because it's just part of part of the process so like not to beat ourselves up for that but like yeah. oh this is if 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 you've experienced it before and you're like you can recognize like oh oh that's what this is and just like let the process roll it kind of comes a little more quick is what yeah. i've experienced you know i'm like oh, okay yeah i can sleep for 24 hours and i recognize what it is and then i'm like okay Time to go, going to this next thing. Yeah. But I also think like what's what's really been beautiful, I love the transformation that's happening as far as the digital era. Um, 
people's creativities are just out of this world um, when it comes to videos or their lives or, you know, being able to create these different spaces. And I, I've been, enjoyed some of that as well and also have found where I want to do it if I want to do it. You know right. Yeah. And there are ways to, like, be able to still create, which is phenomenal because I always say, like, if this happened in 1993, we might be talking a little bit differently. We would. We would definitely not be able to put ourselves out there and just create and get that frustration out in that way. So I'm, I hate saying it because it is obviously a tough time, but it's like I do always feel blessed and I feel like that's the perfect way to kind of just check yourself and be like, what can I do? Well, how can I fix whatever situation I'm in today? Not worry so much about tomorrow. Cause you know what they say, if you have one foot on yesterday and one foot on tomorrow, you're gonna piss all over today. Oh, I don't know where I heard that. That was probably a Queer as Folk episode or something. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true, though. It's, it's yeah. living in that moment. And that's such an important thing just as a performer to do in their performance mm -hmm. that it's interesting how important that is to translate into your regular civilian life. We civilians. Yeah. Uh, Beast, you are called the Cyclone of Burlesque, though. And one of my first ever out-of-town gigs was in Minneapolis when I met you. And I know damn well why they call you the Cyclone of Burlesque. Anyone who has seen you perform, <laughs> let me tell you, when you check that Hold on, no, I'm like, oh, yes. Our face music. What were we gonna say? What were we gonna say right now? You like that transition? No, I just think it's funny because now when like people hear that and they're like, oh, it's your performance style. And I'm like, mm-hmm. That's what, that's what I was like, I wanna, where, how did it come across? How did that name come across? How did, who named you? Did you name yourself? And then did it mean the same thing back then that it does now? So, no, um, it does not mean the same thing. Not that, and, and nothing uh, wrong with it. Um, right. I will say that like, yes, it came out of, born out of like raging, like, doing the show high energy and I'm just like throwing them back and like, woo, let's hop on a building. Uh, like, you know, let's wrestle. Let's wrestle. You know? Yeah. You know, you were, you were mass. I was you were, like, let's my wrestle show. Tito. Come on. You were mass. Wrestle me. You were mass. You were <laughs> mass. And I tried. It's not even like, I'm like, Oh, I let her. No, I tried. She were mass. Yeah. I was like, did I, I might even No, I was dancing with Angie B. Yes. Oh yes, my God, you remember that perfectly. Angie be lovely. I was like, dance with me. Because that's the other thing. I get really wasted and want to partner dance and like yeah. try and lead and all this stuff, right? So like, I get I get aggressive and uh, rage your party. And so, yeah, that's that's how it was born. Actually, Lola Van Ella. Um, I was in St. Louis for one of the, I mean, it was, it, it started as uh I think it was um, the Show Me Burlesque Festival. And um, I was, I don't know if I was featuring that year or, or not, but I, I did the festival and went on a bender. I was on like a 48 hour bender where I ended Oof. up like drinking champagne in the street, hanging out with pimps, jumping up on people. They're having me like, I'm like soaring in, in the air, just like a Thursday. Rage. And I'm like, I have scars. I'm like my natural tattoos from it. And so, and so then we went on a road trip or something. We were doing a show in maybe uh, Colorado and she was the MC for the show. And so she said the hurricane of burlesque. And I like, and I hadn't heard, I like, I was like, oh, you know, she was like telling the story about show me. And then I, that must have been 2015 because then I remember right before Beehoff, I was like, Cyclone. Like, it was like, what rhymes with Redbone? Redbone. You know, words. I love, you know, the alliterations and playing and all that stuff, right? And so I was like, ooh, Cyclone. So then I shifted it to Cyclone Redbone, the Cyclone of Burlesque. Um, and yeah, and, and part of it at the time, too, I was doing, you know, the boom, you know, my my two big hitters, you know, boom and bad to the bone. And it's that, you know, with the skirt. So like it, tra and it transposed. I mean, my oh, yeah. style is, is generally a little more aggressive or has been, you know, the <laughs> it, spectrum it of be. movement. It can be, it's not always, but it can no. be for sure. 
do you because yeah. not only have you been listed in the 21st century burlesque top 50 performers multiple years but recently for last year you were number motherfucking three on top of that la i mean 2019 was such a fucking year for you Ooh. that like on top of that you also were the princess reigning currently still because they ain't have it Ooh. you were <laughs> You are still the princess of burlesque, probably longest running princess of burlesque in history. If we're gonna, I'm gonna have to fact check that. I but mean, I mean, but let me tell you, when that's you a good won, fact check. I'm into this. When you won last year, it was like, it's. I love that there's a picture of when I won two years ago, most comedic, because you're just in the back, like, ah! <laughs> and the and 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 everyone else is like that. But it's like you could tell that we're friends. Right. And your joy is there, and I was so proud to be sitting in the third row just watching you like i cried so much last fucking year is burlesque call of fame is that title something that you feel is the biggest uh not milestone but pretty much in your burlesque career like is it is it the top or do you feel like there's other things that you want to do that are even bigger okay so that's a, there's a couple different things there right so i will say like yes like yeah i'm curious i'm curious right uh, you know i think you know, younger in my career, yeah, like, Queen was like, oh, you know, I'm doing burlesque, this is my goal, right? So like, kind of, in, in, in regards to gauging my career, right? Um, you know, there's some milestones that are kind of for that everyone, right? Like 21st century, getting, you know, hitting the BHOP stage, competing for Queen at that, um, getting Queen, you know, things of that nature. So but I, I, as I uh, continue, I do have some some new goals but i don't even know it's like it would be cool if it happened but also i'm just in an interesting place of i'm enjoying the kinds of work that i'm doing yeah. um i will say that so um receiving princess no like i had never i don't it's funny i'm like i'll never win like you know whatever I was like, i'll never win because generally the acts that i was bringing were not the types of acts that would win and um you know and lo and behold i put my becky burlesque on and whoa i placed you know, and so I you know it's kind of it's it's like kind of messed up, and also Becky like, Burlesque, Becky Burlesque, like it's super real, right? You know, and um, so to that, I would say, and I just had this conversation actually with one of the board members of Behoff, where I thought it was interesting, like I didn't feel like I thought I would feel like winning right like you never know how it's going to hit you um right. you know and but it's interesting because i thought that in 2017 when i competed with bad to the bone like that was my year like that's when i that i felt like that was my princess year like the 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 way i felt in 2017 moving forward was like like that energy that just it, it was di it was different like and yeah. and i was it really excited to push forward and do more after that. And I don't know if it's because I didn't win. And I was like, fuck it, I'm gonna do shit anyways. You can't tell me nothing. Like That rejection or, fires fuel. You know, fire, oh, I didn't win? Okay, let me show you what a winner looks. Let me you show know you how saying? I'm finna win. This is how I'm finna win, right? And so, you know, it became more about, um, you know, thinking about my career as a whole, thinking about um, what I, like my body of work versus just an act. You know, and not, and not and and beyond the performances. Like, what am I doing? It. How am I moving in the community and in the industry? And what am I? Um, how am I investing my time, money, and energy? And where? Um, right. You know. And so, I guess, kind of un un realizing like um, the twist on. I don't know, Foxy just wrote something on a piece of paper and I got distracted, which I will talk about in a second. So oh, my point I'm being, sorry. you're fine. I love you, Foxy. <laughs> Tina said he loves you. And all the people that are watching will love you too. Very all true. All 13 also, of them. Okay. If no. anyone... <laughs> That's okay, because the thing is, is people come back and watch it later. Exactly. Some people, some people stick around for the live and then other pe then people come back and watch it later. Exactly, um, exactly. Uh, so now I do have, I would say I do have larger goals. And it's interesting because it was a goal that I was talking to Foxy about. And I was like, Foxy, you should go for this. And then once I said it, I was like, I can do that too. Like, it, it, it was interesting how sometimes 
you're ins you're inspired by somebody else and think about them in a different way and then yeah. you're also like oh wait but i i have the ability to do this too right and so some i've been thinking about and it's in the back of my mind because i'm at the work that i'm doing i'm like really enjoying um but i'm really about how i'm curious how i can better make an impact in burlesque that isn't just performance and right. not that that's like wrong or anything like that it's just a way that i want to choose to move where like yes i will perform again and i'll do performances and things like that but i'm really in an organizing state at this moment um utilizing this time to kind of like okay what do we need what is our yeah. infrastructure what does that look like and um so actually and the, the thing foxy is talking about um i was having a conversation with um uh, Desiree, who's on the board of the Burlesque Hall of Fame Weekender, and it was fairly early on in um, uh, after George Floyd, and I just really started thinking, we're talking about like gathering the voices, and so thinking about, A, what kind of government would we be if we were, and if anybody had been on my lives, me and Foxy, I was getting really curious about government and what it looks like, and because I did not take civics or was not paying attention when we were, I was supposed to, right? True. And so, so thinking about, you know, if we were a government, what kind of government would we want, would we be? You know, but then also it's like, but we're an industry and what is the infrastructure that's needed in regards to our industry and who has it and how can it be shared? Um, and right, if we're talking about allyship as a whole, right? right what does that look like in our industry? Um, and, I, and who knows, right? So uh, as I was talking to Desiree, I was like, what if we did a census? And so, you know, the U United, and I, it's like, we had just filled them out, you know, so our, you know, United States census. And so right. essentially we're in the process of creating the 2020 International Burlesque Census. Fuck yeah, that's amazing. Holy yeah. Shit. Sucks, holy what? No, I was like, holy shit, that's amazing. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, because like, here's the thing, right? Like, you, you know, depending say. on when you came into burlesque, right, you have a different perspective of what the vastness what looks like. Absolutely. And, and that being said, it's like, I've seen it for a long time. And it's like, you hear certain things, you know, people are like, oversaturation. But then on the other side, it's more is more, right? Well, the yep. reality is now, right? Thanks, Rona. Mm what are all our and who are all our burlesquers who's yeah who who are you know and and not even getting like super specific but getting the data so that we can figure out i guess kind of like what's necessary what's the next step what do our larger platforms need to do what we want them to do like so i don't know just collecting data that's what i love that so so it's at, yeah sorry no, it's like it's you're taking the step. So it's like one step is going to lead to the next and it's going to you're fueling not only just the art form, but the foundation of it, which is so important because, yeah, burlesque is we've talked we've had hour long conversations when we're like hanging out you and I and just trying to figure out how we can not fix, but just understand what this system is and how we can make it the most uh not the most well-oiled machine so that when we're legends and we're older, we don't have to worry so much about people taking care of us so we can kind of build something so we can retire and we can do it like any other job because it is a fucking job. Like it's a regular. Yeah, definitely. Regular. And so it's that uh, like, I'll, it's like myself, Foxy Tan, Lola Lestrange um, and Desiree Demure um, are kind of that we're like leading it. We had our, um, like official first meeting uh, earlier today. Sure. And, and, and to that point, though, of what you just said, right, like, like the legends, what's going on over there, you know, as the legends are, are getting older, and leaving this plane, this realm of our uh, experience, mm -hmm. and what that looks like. And so um, I've also I've had a conversation with Miss Charlemagne in Las Vegas, who is the one who started Burley Cares. Right. And so um, getting some more support around taking care of our legends and, you know, would be really interesting to, you know, to the point of that of like, how can we make that sustainable as to when we get to a particular age, 
Um, you know, so that yes, we'll probably be having two large fundraisers now is the way I see it, right? Like we have, you know, Legends Challenge, which specifically goes for our legends to get to Beehoff. And then, you know, I see us starting to do an annual fundraiser of that same design for Burley Cares, or, I you know, that. figuring out, you know, healthcare. Yeah, seriously, which is like so many important issues that we all face. Yeah. Um, I want to talk a little bit about Glam Jam, but before I want to, I okay, know I, I was like, we got real sincere and I could talk real, I'm real I know, serious you, all day long. So, please. and you know, you and I, especially about something like we're as passionate as we are about our career. Like we can talk about since there is so much and there's so many people doing and there's so many different avenues that we can take. It's really smart the way you're doing it. I commend you and any help you need, girl, just let me know. Like, you know, you can always text me, call me, like whatever the fuck I can do. Um, before we talk about Glam Jam, though, I do want to play a game with you because I think it's really fun. And yeah. don't worry, I didn't use Foxy Tan in this one because obviously she's standing right there. <laughs> so we're going to play a very special edition of Name That Stripper. Name so That Stripper. Oh, my gosh. Okay. This is a sponsor by G's Louise game, by the way. So I just oh. want to shout that out. Yeah. So what's going to happen? <laughs> so what's going to happen is I'm going to share a photo of a stripper. They're going to be pixelated and their face is going to be, you know, fucked up. I'm already so nervous. That you, okay. <laughs> you don't have to be nervous. It's a good time. It's a fun way to just promote our friends, <laughs> promote people, and just have a good ass time. And I'm going to turn on the comments. So if you don't know what the fuck is going on, people in the audience can help you. And it's totally cheating. And I don't give a fuck. All right? Okay. 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 So Redbone, you ready to name that stripper? Name that stripper. Here we oh, go. Jesus we <laughs> Jesus in the audience. You're going to win this. Name this stripper, my love. Oh my gosh, this is Ooh, so did terrible. I did a hard I did a hard right from the the light? No, 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 no. Do you want to help from the audience? I, I would love help from the audience. <laughs> Jeezy goes, name that stripper. Jeezy, who do you think this stripper is? One more, one, two more shots. You always get three shots. Okay. Um, let's see. I mean, is it, I mean, is, is, is it so, oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> You're just nervous. I love it. I know. It is that. I will give you a hint. Okay, please hint, please. They reside in uh, Vegas. They oh, have... um. It's cheesy goes, I don't know, bro. <laughs> Somebody was like, Asian? I'm like, wait, what? Um, oh, Melody Sweets. No, okay. damn. You give up? No, I don't. I love um... that. Um, uh, their first uh, initial Raquel in their Lee. name is also the same as their last initial in their name. Kalani Coconuts. Close. Damn, no. Yes, no. bitch, exactly what I was thinking, geez. <laughs> You're going to have to give up, girl. You're going to have to give up. We got to go. Okay. Go. Um, I skip. Raquel Reed. I said Raquel Reed at some oh, point. Did... I did say Raquel Reed. I believe that, actually. So you got it. Here you go. Okay. I believe it. I'm gonna watch it, but I believe that shit. Here we go. We're gonna bring a boy into the scene. Oh, Bo uh, Creeps. Bam! Yeah. Bam! You got that shit. All right, this one's really fun. I didn't even have to pixelate the face because see, Jeezy said it, so uh, completely confirmed. I just didn't hear it. Wi-Fi. Uh, who is this stripper? I would say Lola Vanella. That is Lola Vanella. There's no regular face picture because that's just a regular ass damn picture. Look at that. Yeah, I was that's like, we have the same shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Name that stripper. Oh, um, she high as hell all the time. Um, <laughs> she in San Diego, she'd be roller skating. Oh my God, it's just, I'm just having that moment. And I literally you know who just it is. watched her, her new thing of lament. She did a lament. Uh, You're literally saying who it is. That's not even, that's like totally fair. Ginger Valentine. Ginger Valentine. <laughs> Ginger Valentine, y'all, that was Sorry, so good. You, that's like going, that's the Cuban Missile Crisis. He did, like, you knew who it was. All right, all right, we got uh, two more, okay? Here we go. Name okay. that stripper. Egypt Black now. Boom! Egypt. Yep. Fuck Egypt. yeah. Okay. We got one more, one more. Here we go, here we go. This is a legend, all right? Name that stripper. Oh, oh, shit. Uh, Lottie. Yes, uh, Lottie the Lottie body. the body. Oh, oh look, Jeezy says rest it's in easy. power. Listen, it's not about it being hard. It's about us promoting as many people as we can in an hour. Yeah. Um, 
please check out Redbone's Glam Jam. Redbone has uh, an amazing handmade lotion that has glitter in it that she herself makes. It's at Glam Jam Rocks on Instagram. Y'all need to order as much of that as you fucking can. Um, well, it's really hot right now. Be careful. It's really hot right now. Yeah. What do you mean? I'm saying in the summer, my and I, I actually enjoy this. Um, yes, purchase it, but if you li live in a high hot climate, pr be prepared for it to melt. So, duly noted. Red Bull, I, would love to have, I would love to have you back. We can talk about all the shows that you were doing in the before times, all the shows in the after times. Whenever you want to come back, please let me know, and I would love to have you as my guest. You look gorgeous as fuck. Look at you just living your life. Give it up for the current, well, that's repetitive, the reigning princess of burlesque, Miss Exotic World, red motherfucking bone number three in this motherfucker. Show some love. I love you so much, red bone. Give him a little, give him a little love. Give him a little love. Oh, say bye, everybody. Mwah. Mm. Say. <laughs> I love you, girl. Be good. Be safe. Oh, I love y'all. Bye. Bye. Oh, red bone is the jam, y'all. I love me some red mother fucking bone y'all uh damn i could talk forever and i'm trying to keep this under an hour so i'm gonna keep this moving with our second guest who is also another one of my friends for the past uh i think like five years we have the phenomenal miss may hey hi first of all buddy. My, my head's cut off right now wait i think i need it gets a little funky because uh, because I'm like lower. It's like that twist, but you look okay. amazing. How are you, Miss May? I'm good. You look fucking gorgeous as hell. Thanks. Like my I'm shirt. Love what does it say? Let me see mm -hmm. it. Um, a woman does not have to be modest in order to be respected. Yes. <laughs> message. This Fuck is you. actually Sheila's shirt, and I just randomly found it, so I was like. Listen, you and Sheila be taking all of the uh, naked photo shoots together. So I believe that I believe that y'all just have each other's clothes now. Yeah, we do. Uh, Monica, May, I have a very <laughs> special game that I'm going to play with you in a little bit. So the okay. audience will be able to win something because you are starting to put out some merch right now. Yes. So we're going to talk about that a little bit later. But before we get started, I do want to shout out the fact that I met Monica, I met Monica May at uh, Monday Night Tees, which is produced by Lily Von Stupp. Mm -hmm. And that was your burlesque teacher. Yes. What, what made you, because as you started in your life, and burlesque was probably not the most, maybe, I don't know, tell us, uh, probably not the most visual thing that you saw growing up. You were an actress, you still are an actress, but yeah. what made you leap from acting to the world of the striptease? Um, well, I had actually, I mean, I've been, I've been acting since I was a kid. I started a professional acting career at really like 14 or 15 and pretty much pursued that my entire life. That's not all I really, ever really wanted to do and then move to LA like travel around the world doing it move to LA and just honestly got burnt out like there's no other way to put it like moved to LA was like a hustling just you know how LA is just non-stop and just doing it and doing it and doing it and I think I just finally got to the point where I had gotten kind of beat down to be perfectly honest and uh, just tired and I didn't feel really inspired anymore and I just was starting to feel really insecure mm. um, in a way that I don't think I had ever felt in my life before and I just knew like I've got to do something different right now like I was almost getting like panic attacks on the way to auditions like yeah. when an audition would come in I would almost panic because mm. I knew I'd have to do it you know that anxiety so, yeah yeah, and I was just, I finally, you know, and then I just toyed with, like, the idea where it's like, well, if I'm not an actress, if I'm not pursuing, you know, acting, like, well, what am I? Like, who am I? Like, this is all I've ever done. And then, so you have that, like, whole, like, identity crisis, you know? Um, and then Which, I just in, the, in, the, in the hindsight of it, I love because at the end of the day, knowing how much you've accomplished, how much you've done, knowing that there is a moment where you're just kind of panicked, I do think that everyone goes through that. So it's really kind of amazing to hear when people do have that similar, like, fuck. And it happens all the time. Like, even if you feel like you get that right, sometimes it just goes yeah. right back. 
So I love that because I feel that all the time. So knowing in hindsight how far yeah. you've come from that mindset is really nice to watch. Yeah, and you know, it was like this whole evolution. Like yeah. for me getting to the point of like quitting acting, which I never actually quit, which is kind of the funny part. Um, but stop, like I stopped pursuing it professionally like I was because like, I don't really fuck around with shit. Like it's either like, I'm like doing it or right. I'm not doing it, you know? Yeah. Um, and I never really liked the idea of it being a hobby because I never felt like I was a hobbyist. I always felt like this is a profession for me. So I threw a lot of like whatever meditation, like soul searching. I actually ended up um, doing DMT, which is like a psychedelic. That's like a uh, really just opens your mind and your heart. And after oh. that experience, actually, um, I came out of that experience um, and I was like, I need to quit. Oh. Like, I finally got the clarity from this drug, and I was like, I need to quit. And then I kind of said that, because in, in my trip, this is going kind of deep, guys, but... I'm into in, it. In Don't do drugs, trip, kids. In my trip, what I really saw was that fear is, um, like, all there is is love. Yeah. All there is is love. And my fear... And my anxiety was really something I was making up and it wasn't actually true. What's true is like love, you know, we live in a world of plenty, like, you know, the world is working for our good. Um, and so once I got the clarity about that, I wasn't afraid to quit anymore. And then the moment I quit, I found burlesque. Mm. And then from burlesque, I mean, you've literally just like, skyrocketed on that because not only are you one of the most amazing performers that I've ever seen and trust me I don't say that shit unless I fucking mean it but <laughs> you were also won multiple titles such as 2016 best performance at the uh a Burley Q festival most classic also at the Arizona burlesque festival and most erotic at the Hollywood burlesque festival those are some uh some titles you got there to show some of your amazing skills because you are a force you your passion on stage like translates even if you are dressed up like a barbie doll with a cuban ass ken to brian adams <laughs> you still emote a passion that's like that doll can't be real i don't remember this scene from toy story 3 <laughs> oh, thanks man i love you too I love you. We got to figure out it. some way to do that again. Yo. I know. No, well, what we should do is we should film it. <laughs> yeah, we do. Because yeah. we don't have a choice. <laughs> and, and, and that's the interesting, not interesting, but you also have a huge passion for videoing and editing and filming stuff right now. And that's kind of one of those things that you are taking up a lot more during this switch into the after times. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about that passion that you have for that? Well, it, what's, what's really interesting is that before I ever stepped on stage as a burlesque performer, I actually made my first what I like to call mini movies. Um, mm -hmm. And I made it with a really, really good friend, Luciano, um, who was just kind of getting into filming at the time. And he's always down to create a project with me. So and I always Love have a project that. that I'm trying to create. So he's amazing. Um, we've actually created many, many movies. Um, and and that was actually the first thing I did before I even stepped on stage because I was like just wanting to get it going. Like I was like, I just want to create something with this new thing I'm doing, like let's film. Um, so I've kind of been doing that throughout my entire career because for me, what I've, I mean, just my passion has always been, like, I come at burlesque from an acting standpoint. Like, that's mm -hmm. kind of, I'm, I, I don't come at it as a dancer, even though I am a dancer. Um, right. But I really come at it with an acting point of view. So it's, like, more for me about the character, about the story I'm telling. Um, so I have always kind of wanted to be able to create burlesque acts for film because I've always felt like there was, like, a a lack of that being seen. So if you can't see a burlesque dancer live, most likely what you would be seeing was a tape of them performing live. Which right. we both know is never as good. And no, it it's really never is. gonna be as good. Yeah. 
the live shit is like you just can't i mean even the best the tapes bed. Even yeah. the best tapes, even like when they're really well done at the shows and you have a great videographer and everything and it really is still impactful. It's when you're live with someone, you're just like, oh my God, you're just, you're, you know, your heart bleeds. It's so good. So for me, I've always thought like, oh, wouldn't it be cool though if you could bring burlesque visually to film, but do it a little bit more cin cinematic. So it's not yeah. just like an act. It's like, you know, cut together and it's like has... You know, it's like a little movie. So you can really portray always, what you're wanting to. I've always been like, I want to do music videos, like the Boy Scout in a forest, like doing shit I like that. I love music video. I, I honestly, I would, if there was any type of film medium that I would really go into, if I did it like, um, you know, on the backside, directing, writing, filming, anything like that, it would be music videos. Fuck yeah. Listen, I'm going to need to hit you yeah. up for real. Like I told you yesterday, because it's like, I do feel like a little bit more, even though we're still, you know, socially distancing and trying to be stuck in, in quarantine, I do feel like there is a little bit more freedom to be smart about creating stuff and just keeping it, you know, between two people or as few people as possible. Oh, um, you but I'm like a lot, you know, you can do a lot with a little. And that's my motto. <laughs> and that list, that's the key right there. You can do a whole lot with a whole little. Yeah, because that's usually what I'm working on. Is and that's <laughs> and that's a bit of that's a bit of the charm in burlesque too. The fact that it is yeah. DIY, that it is there is a place for new performers, experienced performers. But it's like at the end of the day, we are creating all of this together. So it's really kind of uh, amazing to see what the potential would be when we start creating one act or one cinematic piece with multiple people. Like there's no way that it wouldn't yeah. kind of be seen by more people and just there's still that lack of like even understanding what burlesque is now with mainstream audiences so right exactly yeah i'm actually i'm i've got some stuff that i'm going to be filming i've got um something that i'm filming for simone del mar uh, mm -hmm. she has a birthday project uh that she wants to do so i'm going to film that for her and then i have something that i'm going to be starring in so i'm, I'm excited i feel like i just actually through talking to you about this interview, I just really felt like I like clicked for me that, you know, I've been so lost. Like, what am I gonna do? And I'm not really super into the live shows. Like I haven't really got super into the live shows yet. Um, I don't know if I've been maybe intimidated or I just haven't been able to really like wrap it, my brain around like- It's fair. It's a fair, it's a fair reaction to it, yeah. Yeah, but I love the interview stuff. This is, I'm like, this is easy. <laughs> Well, that's like, the thing. Perfect, too, that, it was like, that was the thing, too. It's like, I'm trying to figure out a way where because some of the live shows I was it took me like two weeks during quarantine to finally be like, fine, I'll start performing. But it's like, in the good times, it's been good in the bad times it has been real rough. And it's one of those things where it's like, I do think there are such a like, there's so much of it coming on right now and so much similar uh, productions online, that it is important to try to bring to people something different. So it's like something like a talk show, burlesque style, what, however style, is just something I wanted to bring to the people. Plus, I love you all so much. And I and you know me, as a host, I love to brag about y'all because it's like, if you, you know when you hype your friend up and you don't always get those chances to do it in front of a room full of people with a microphone? <laughs> it's It feels like that. And so I just wanted to kind of amplify that and do that here and play some games with y'all. Yeah. No, absolutely. I love it. I thank you for inviting me on. Of course, not only performing, uh, creating uh, videography, but you also produce. You in the before times, you the before times. many many uh, shows like Provoke that I also was a part of at one point. Yeah. And then also your collaboration with Ashley Hayward Electra, which was Electra. at the Catch One. Yeah, which was at Catch One. Um, yeah, you know I. I've always enjoyed producing. I don't know if producing is like necessarily 100% my passion. Right. Um, I, you know, honestly, I, I think where I am with producing is it's just like at this point, I'm like, this is what I want to do. And I just have to make this shit happen because no one else is going to make it happen. So <laughs> that part, that necessity makes you a producer. Most yeah. Cause pretty much everything I'm producing, like it's like Dang. everything. Everything I do is usually like me being like, okay, this is what I want to do. Like, you know, how do I make this happen? Even if I'm doing it for other people. So, um, 
But I love that we can do that because at the end of the day, it is really nice to not be able to have to, especially like in the acting field, you have to rely on other people's opinions, other people's shit all the time. And that's where I think all of that anxiety comes from. But if we're able to create things, it's just, it, 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 we can do it. It may take longer or whatever, but it's physically possible. So it's kind of nice to know that yeah. if we want to see something, we have to kind of put it out there and start, even if it's just steps. A lot of people want things to be perfect right away. I know that's, I have a problem with perfection. So that's producing is hard for me because you have to relinquish a, a good amount of control and expectations because I mean, we honestly, me and Ashley, we put our heart and soul into um, Electra and there was all kinds of crazy shit that went down in Electra. Like that had nothing to do with us. Like whether it was this or whether it was that. And like, sometimes, especially in LA, like, yeah. You know, in big cities that are extremely competitive, that like you can't even hardly get into a good venue. So if you know, exactly. and it's just there's so much red tape to try to make it, hap it happen in Los Angeles that it gets discouraging. You know, I mean, just a venue, finding a venue in general is yeah. a pain in the ass. And now, and then, and one that's loyal. So yeah, and now most of the venues are shutting down. Exactly. So and when we come back, I don't even know. It's what, starting from like, scratch in a way, yeah. Like a lot of the stuff might, you know, harbell. Who knows the stuff that's going to be closed down? So, really optimizing virtual stuff is really going to be necessary, and even after. <laughs> Speaking of optimizing the most out of your shit, you have merchandise that you're releasing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. Uh, uh, well. I actually, I'm going to turn on the comments for the fans. So everybody that's watching this right now, we're going to play a special game with Miss May called Pop Quiz. Pop and quiz. I, I'm not asking you these questions. I am going to ask everyone watching these questions. Uh, they're going to be multiple choice. So there's going to be three answers and you all have to uh, answer the fucking questions. They're going to be about uh, Miss May. So all you have to do is put in your answers. I will be tabulating them. And whoever <laughs> wins, tell them what they win, Miss May. OK, so well, I, um, I'm i going to be showing you. Should I show? Should I yeah, show? sure, sure. OK, so I am, OK. I have <laughs> been needing to even just bare bones get a logo done forever. And for whatever reason, this has just been one of those things that I, it's like never happened. And it's always been driving me nuts. And I've always wanted to get all this stuff done. Finally, thank, thank you, COVID. I got it done. Okay, I don't know. Ooh, so, I'm ready to do the unveiling of a logo. Okay, so first I'm going to show you guys my sassy new lighters. So I got, look at, look how cute. Help me smoke some weed, yeah. I know, smoke a bowl with me or light a candle or some incense or sage. Fuck it. Like, yeah. how cute is this? That's hot as fuck. Right? With my little Ooh. logo. Yeah, and then, oh, look. Ooh, sassy. Oh, a little but, <laughs> One dilemma is, is I just realized you can't send this shit in the mail because it's a lighter. So um, I might end up doing lighter covers. So then you could just pop your lighter in. That's super cute. Yeah, I love that. that. Okay. Yeah. So there's um, that. There's this one, which is my nudie lighter. So I'm going to cover up my titties. Up Instagram friendly. Hey. Okay, so there, that's actually one of my characters. I named Natalie. Um, she's naked, so you could have, like, oh, you could have um, my titties just at home to light all your stuff with. So that's oh, cool. Yeah. And then uh, my new little sticker. Yes, those are so cute. Isn't this the cutest? Oh, my God, I love that. All right. I know, and I actually think I want to make earrings. Oh, that's fucking cute as shit. Oh, my God, especially like that. Yeah. Oh my god, that's like literally perfect earrings. I oh, wait, we have, we have five minutes, so we're gonna have to play this. But show oh. show show, okay. show us what they're gonna win. Okay, so you're gonna win a a sticker, and then I thought I could um, take a Polaroid for you and put in a Polaroid. I'm gonna win this game. Let's do this shit. All right, y'all. Remember, you're gonna have to answer, and then I will let you know who the winner is gonna be, and then we'll sort that all out after the show. But we got five more minutes, so this is the hey, first. Brazil. This is the first question uh, that we have. What month was Monica born in? Was it April, May, or March? What do you guys think? April, May, or March? Which month is uh, our Queen Miss May's birthday month? The first one that gets it right. 
that's my that might be how we do that shit right now <laughs> brazil's not the answer but hallelujah no oh. march is not up oh, mr ah! mr max got it april is the oh God, answer april, you would think it's miss may you would think it was may but that's clever as fuck all right april ah! we got mr in the lead all right question number two is what state is miss may from is it from problematic ass florida problematic ass arkansas or problematic ass oklahoma <laughs> which one do you think, what do you think? You... mr max you better say it right oh florida mr max is gonna win this shit i already i'm calling you right now all right oh my god y'all better know i'm from florida <laughs> <laughs> if you uh not spd emergency if you answer this right mr max you already won because it's three out of five uh, if, Mon if Monica May could be any kind of animal, what would she be? Any kind of bird, a house cat, or a shark? Which one would you do you think she would be? A bird, any kind of bird, just fly. A shark or a kitty cat, a house cat? Mr. Max, come through. Come through. <laughs> oh, shit, yes! Mr. Max, for the win, got that speedy-ass typing finger. Damn, Mr. Max, you just want some Miss May merchandise. Uh, I got you, boo. I got you. Yes. Oh, my God. That's so fucking amazing. Holy shit. Everyone, show some love to Miss May, one of my favorite burlesque performers. Uh, do you have anything else that you want to let the people know about right now? Uh, please follow her. Please, you know, show her all the love on Venmo and PayPal as well. Yeah, yeah, no, thank you for having me on. I love you so much. Like I love you. Super fun and I can't wait to um do more. Anytime anytime you want to come back, we'll play some different games, we'll fuck around. Anytime you want to promote <laughs> something, let me know. I got you, girl. <laughs> I love you. I love you too. Everyone show some love to Miss Bye. May. Bye. I love you all. Stay safe out there. Wear your mask. Be kind <laughs> to each other. Love each other. Mm. All of that. I love you, girl. You're the shit. Mwah. Mwah. Say hi to the family. I love you. Bye. 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 Oh, that was amazing. Miss May and Redbone. We got two more minutes. So in that time, I do want to shout out the fact that if you want to follow me on OnlyFans, $5 a month, you're going to see a lot of stuff. You may not see what you think you're going to see, but read the bio and see. Uh, also, I'm going to be uh, performing at Learn the Words Bitch tomorrow on Zoom. You can check that or on Zoom. It's going to be on Twitch. And it's going to be at 6 p.m. So check them out on Instagram at Learn the Words Bitch. Uh, also, you can check me out, TitoBonito.com. And the Tito Bonito Show is every Friday night at 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern. We will have some more uh, performers, guests. And trust me, you do not want to miss out on who we have coming up. So I love you all. Make good choices. I worry about you. And make sure you check my OnlyFans out on my link in my bio. I'm the Cuban Missile Crisis. Shut it out. Bye.